My name is Josh Westmoreland and I'm the Robotics Project Manager here with Cross Robotics. I want to welcome you back to the next entry in our video blog series where we showcase and highlight some of the cool and interesting features of a universal robot. So last time we discussed with you safety planes and showed you how those safety planes could be used to trigger reduced speed modes and help create a safer work environment. Today we're going to be talking about another really exciting and interesting feature of the universal robot, the palletizing wizard. When you're thinking about loading and unloading a process robotically, usually there's some sort of pallet involved, whether it be on the incoming part side or the outgoing part side. There generally is some sort of pallet. And the way one of those pallets would normally be programmed is either with a series of a lot of points or with a complex program that deals with offsets and counters to help develop the program. But either way, that's going to take quite a bit of programming time. What UR has done with the palletizing wizard has made this process a lot simpler. So just by entering a few pieces of information and adding a few points, the UR will generate a program that will pick the pallet for you every time. So the demonstration that I'm going to show you today is just that. We're going to pick these parts off of this pallet array that I've got here and we're just going to drop them into this bin. Now this is a simple application, but it does show you how quick and easy it can be to use the palletizing feature in the universal robot. So join me on the teach pendant and let's get to work. Now that we're on the teach pendant, let's go through what we need to do to add the palletizing wizard. First things first, I want to explain to you that the before start sequence you see here and the declared subprograms are part of the Roboteak Basic template. Now what that does is that it allows us to call the subprograms required to open and close the Roboteak Gripper. In terms of our robot program, we're going to be working under this tree here. So the first thing we need to do is insert a move and set this waypoint to where we want our home position to be. Now we're already in the location, so we can simply hit OK. To add the palletizing wizard, we're going to go under Structure and Wizards. As you see here, you have a few wizards to select from. The one we're interested in is the pallet. Once that's selected, it's going to give you a drop down and add structure to your program tree for everything that you need to insert your pallet. So here we're going to go to Pattern. We're going to again hit our Command tab and we're going to select the pattern that best fits our application. For this, it is a square. Now this brings you to another screen where you're going to tell the robot how many rows and columns you're working with. So here, we have two rows and nine columns. As you'll notice, in your pattern sequence, you also have a first, second, third, and fourth corner, as well as an approach, pattern point, set, weight, and exit. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go through each of these, and we're going to set our first corner. So we simply highlight it, specify position, and then either using the free drive or the arrows, move the robot into the orientation we want it to be for our pallet, and simply hit OK. Now at this point, it's a good idea to save some time and go ahead and use this first corner to set a few other points. The first of which being your pattern point. Now the pattern point is the first position in your pallet that the robot is going to go to to pick a part. Generally, that's going to be your first corner, so we want to go ahead and establish that pattern point while we're here. The next will be your approach and your exit points. Your approach and exit points are points in space just above the parts that you are going to pick, which allow the robot to come into position to grab the part or to remove the part without crashing into other parts or crashing into other features of your pallet. So to do this, we're going to simply set, we're going to lift above a little bit, select OK, and the exit and your approach point generally are going to be about the same point. For this situation, we're going to hit OK. Now it's important to note that your approach and exit point are transferred to each position in your pallet that you are going to be picking from. So now that we have those established, we can go into programming our second corner. We simply specify this position and move our robot to the second corner where we need it to be. Now this is going to be over your selected parts. So you want to be in the position where you're going to be picking your parts not on the actual corners of your pallet. Once we do that, 
we simply do the same thing for the third position. We move the robot to where we need it to be, and we select OK. For the fourth corner, we're going to do the same thing. We move to the fourth corner in our palette. and we select OK. Now at this point, the robot is going to be doing algorithms in the background to equally space out where each part should be based on the four corners as well as the row and column information you provided. There are two things left in establishing our palette sequence, our set and our weight. Now set is where in a traditional program or using a traditional pneumatic gripper, you would simply set a digital output to on to activate the pneumatic valve and close the pneumatic gripper. For the Robotik, it is a little different. So what we're going to do is go into Structure and delete the set. And we're actually going to add a sub-program call and call Close and Wait. Now here we can also add an additional wait period if we want, just to verify that we are in position long enough to pick the part. Now that is all it is it takes to program the palette sequence. Now we'll just add a few more points to go to our drop location. Simply selecting here, adding some structure, and adding a move. Then we can simply move that line down and set our waypoints to where we need them to be using the free drop button to get ourselves oriented over our drop location. And that's all it takes to program the pallet sequence. So that's how quick and easy using the palletizing wizard and the universal robot can be. Now this demo was a simple application, but you could just as easily be unloading into another pallet, loading into a CNC machine, or placing your part into a fixture, absolutely anything that your application calls for. As you can see, in just a short amount of time, using no offsets, using no counters, and without teaching a whole lot of points, we are off and running with clearing this palette. So I want to say again that I greatly appreciate you taking the time to tune in and watch this video to learn a little more about the Universal Robot. Be sure to stay tuned to CrossRobotics.com and be on the lookout for our next video where we're going to be discussing how to use the force moves that are capable with the Universal Robot. Again, I'm Josh. I want to say thank you for taking the time. And remember, here at Cross, we make motion work. Hey, everyone. Welcome to a quick bonus footage segment of the Palletizing Wizard video blog. Now what we wanted to show you here is what it actually takes to program the Palletizing Wizard. You saw what we were doing on the Teach Pendant, but you couldn't see me manipulating the robot arm to get it into the right positions, and that could throw some things a little askew. So what we wanted you to do was to be able to actually see what it takes to program this from a blank slate from start to finish, and then actually get to see it pick the entire palette. And that's all it takes. So our pallet's done. I'm going to let the program run and let you watch it clear the entire pallet.
And again here, in between where you're picking up the pallet and the moves that you create to get over here to your drop location, you can do any a number of things. I could have this sped up to be moving a lot quicker. I could go to a different feature if I needed to. There are a lot of different things you could do. That's all there is to it.